Hi everyone. Uh, in this tutorial, we're going to uh, transform a blog which doesn't have any database features. Uh, we'll be using Mongoose. Uh, so this tutorial requires that you know some uh, Mongoose and MongoDB. Uh, maybe you've worked with it a little bit. Uh, then you can understand the concepts that will be explained in this uh, tutorial. So let me just uh, do uh, nodemon.app.js just to show how this blog currently looks like and what the project will be. So we have, uh, so this is just a simple page. Okay, and it doesn't have anything. So if I go to compose slash compose, I can just input a title, some title, some post. And when I post it, it will show here. And when I click on read more, I'll go to the page. So basically, this is what uh, the code is doing right now. And the first step that we want to do is we want to save the composed posts uh, with MongoDB. Okay, so I'm actually going to start from the beginning. I'll uh, do it from the beginning, actually. So if uh, when, after I open the hyper, uh, I can, uh, so this basically we can do that with uh, PowerShell. Uh, I just like using this this uh, console uh, because of the looks of it. So I'm going to create two tabs. In one of the tabs, after installing uh, MongoDB, we need to first run Mongod. And it's going to initialize the server for us. And it's going to give us, it's going to tell us that it's listening on this address with this port. And then the next thing we do is Mongosh. Uh, sorry, Mongosh. And what it's going to do, it's going to, give us the path to that server, and we can now write to it. So uh, the first one basically initializes it, and then Mongosh, it means it's the shell that we use to access that. Uh, so it's the shell, uh, the CLI of it, basically. So how do we go about doing the, that? So the first thing we, we need to look at is what the code is uh, has. Okay, So the, the code requires these libraries. It requires Express and Body Parser, AGS, and Lodash. So, uh, this, uh, these are the dependencies. So if we go to the dependencies, these are all of them. And I had them installed uh, already. And if I go back to it, uh, here we have uh, Express is used uh, here. We're requiring it for Express.js, okay? Body parser to extract data from the request or responses from the pages. AGS is embedded JavaScript. And this is what we will be using as the view engine. And the view engine is uh, what we are going to be uh, or how we are going to pass JavaScript to the views. Okay, so this is basically what a view, view engine is. And we're going to be using Lodash, and Lodash basically is a library that includes uh, some uh, common functions like capitalizing, capitalizing or doing uh, proper capitalization, or, uh, or uh, kebab capitalization, or kebab case, sorry. So uh, basically, uh, these are the libraries we're requiring. And these are some strings. They're just random strings. We are instantiating app from Express. And basically, uh, this means now this is just a, to, to to simplify it as well. To, so we have the word app. Okay. So here we're requiring it. Here we're instantiating it. An app we are going to set use. We have we have the things we can access are sets, use, uh, get, uh, post, and listen. Okay. So these are the, the the methods we're going to use from the Express library in this project. So we are setting the view engine to be AGS, and we are using the body parser with the URL encoded, and we are saying extended through. So this is how. Uh, if you go to the documentation, they just tell you, let Express or Node.js uh, use body parser in this way. So in the documentation, this is how uh, it's written. And the extended through basically means we can have uh, objects within objects, and we can extract that. So I'm going to skip over it, because things that, that are part of the documentation, it's just how the developers programmed it to use it. As well as express.static. Also, if you, go, if you want to use static files like the CSS, we have to create a public folder and include styles.css in it. Here we have. Uh, an empty empty uh, array of posts. We have get method, method for the home page, for the about page, for the contact page, for the compose. Okay, we have four get methods. We have one post method here for compose, and we have another get method for express routing. And we'll talk about that in a second. And lastly, we are using the listen just to initiate the server. Okay. So uh, we're going to go over them as we work on the project. Uh, just to take a look at the EJS files, the most important one is the home one. So we are using layouts in this project, and we are including uh, including the header and including the footer. And the header is basically some simple uh, uh, here. We, we put them in partials, okay, which is a good practice to keep the footer and the header in, the, in partials. We create a, this folder. And inside of it, it has just the beginning boiler, uh, boilerplate, uh, HTML boilerplate. And here we are also using Bootstrap. okay. So we included Bootstrap in the style sheet. And here for the, for the CSS, it's slash CSS, styles.css, so we don't specify uh, views or anything. We don't say anything. So we just go to public. We don't specify, sorry, public. We just say CSS styles.css. Because if we go to the JavaScript, 
uh, when we are saying express.static will be the public, in this case it will understand that it will go to public and then it will fetch styles. Uh, yeah, so this is for the header page, and then there's some uh, lists and some uh, basically, basically it's just like the skeleton of the website, a nav bar, and uh, we're using of course bootstrap with with a nav bar. If we go to the home page, it includes this header and the footer. The footer, footer is also HTML, uh, the, the ending part of the HTML boilerplate, which will be the ending div, the ending HTML, the ending uh, tag of the body. Okay. So here we we have home, which we see here, and also, this is we're using EJS, uh, and the way we do that is we use these brackets and equal. Here we are using dash. And here we are using equal, and equal means we are we want the value that's inside of this variable. Okay, if we're running normal JavaScript code, we do not put equal or we do not put minus or dash. We just bluntly run the JavaScript code with as we would normally want. And here, when we want to extract a value, then we put the equal in this case, and then we the closing tags. So we'll look at the values, how we are extracting them from the JavaScript code. So if we go to the JavaScript code, uh, we'll do it as we uh, as we work, we'll understand how we actually do it. OK, so the first thing we need to do is we need to include uh, mongoose, uh, because we're going to be using mongoose in this project. So we're going to say, to say constant mongoose is going to be require uh, mongoose. And after we require mongoose, we want to connect to it. So I'll connect to it, so I'll just do it here. So just for illustration purposes, we say mongoose.connect. And then I specify the path to where we are trying to connect. So if we go here, uh, the connection should be, uh, well, if normally it should be something like this. So let's just make sure that the port number is this. OK, so it should be this path. And then we can specify uh, the database we're going to create. OK? Here, I can specify the name of the database. So in this part of the URL, I can specify the database name that I am creating to this. So I'm just going to call it posts. Uh, or let me, yeah, I think posts makes sense. So if I save it. Now, when I run it, it's going to say, I, can, I did not find the Mongoose module. And we need to install it, of course. And I'll just stop here and then say npm install Mongoose. And after when, when this is done, we can basically go ahead and run it again. And now, if we go to our shell, here it says test. But let's say show collections. It says nothing, right? And let's say show DBs. It's going to show us our new DB that's newly created or not created even. And the reason why it's not created is because we did not call a model, OK? We need to call a model in this case. And so this is the, the next, step, next step we are going to do, is we are going to call a model. Uh, but before we call a model, the way we do that in uh, Mongoose is we need to uh, specify the schema. So what is our schema in this case? Since we have a post, we want to uh, save the post. So when we go to Compose, we have a title and we have a post. So this, and we have, uh, we have these two things. So this will be our schema. Our schema will be in that case, if we create it uh, here in boxes, OK? So our schema will be, in that case, uh, is we have title, and we have posts. Okay. So the title will be, in this case, kind of the ID for posts. So this is our schema, in this case. So how do we create the schema in the model? Okay. So after we call Mongoose, I'm going to create a schema and call it constant post schema, and this is going to be an object, okay, a JavaScript object. So it has title, which will be of type string, and it will have posts, which also will be of type string, or posts, let's keep it post. And the next thing we are going to do is we're going to create our model. And we're going to call, call the model in this case, const post with capital P, and we're going to say mongoose.model, and I'm now going to create a collection in this DB, okay? I'm going to call this collection post and then when we go, uh, MongoDB will automatically add an S to it. OK, it will automatically do that. So we're not going to do that here. OK. And after we do that, we need to pass the schema that we have created, which is the schema. We want to pass it here. And we just, I'll just copy that. And then we pass it. So let me save that. So if I go to show DBs, now I can see it has been created. OK, so after I created the schema, it got created. It's only 88 uh, kilo, kilobytes. 
Now, after I've created it, now I can use this one to make objects out of it. Okay, I can instantiate it. So I can create const, for example, post1 is equal to a new post. And I can include uh, whatever I want following the schema, of course. I need to follow the schema. So I say a new post, and then I follow the schema. And I say the title, something, and then post. Sorry, let me say something as a string. Something, post, something. Okay. And then once I do that, I can save it to the database by saying post one dot save, which I'm not going to do because I don't want to make the database dirty and then clean it up. Or actually, let's do it so we can view it. So if uh, we go to uh, use this database, so we go to use posts, uh, and then I show the collections that we have here. It should have created the collections called posts. It, uh, kept, uh, it pluralized this one. And then uh, what I can do is I can say, uh, should I, is it use posts? Nope. Posts dot, sorry, db dot posts dot find to look all, at all of the objects that have been added. So this is how we added this object, but I want to get rid of it now. So what I can do is I'll just say db.items.drop, remove everything. Uh, sorry, db.posts.drop, everything. I'll just drop it so we can create everything. I'll, I'll remove the save now, so I don't want to save anything now. Okay. So uh, the next thing we, do, we want to do is when the user cl clicks on submit, okay, then we just want to save the item or to, to save the title and to save the post to the database, okay? So the way we do that is going to be actually in the post method of the compose uh, function here, or the method here. So what we have now is we are actually using body parser to get the title and to get the content, also using body parser, and then we're pushing it to the uh, post array that we have here. So we have, sorry, we are, we are pushing it to the post array that we have here that, we, that is empty. But we do, want, we do not want to do that anymore. I'll keep it here, just, uh, just in case. So this is used here. Uh, I'll go to it and check if we have this list. If we have it, then we should not be adding the post anymore unless we edit it. And we are not going to be doing the edit function here. Uh, we are just we just want to find if this is available, then I want to edit it. If not, then uh, don't edit it. So in order to do that, I need to go to the uh, model here to tap into it directly. So we, the model is, we have is called post, right? So we say post dot find, we can do find by ID, find by ID and delete, find by ID and remove. So many things we can do here. We can also do update, which uh, if we are we're doing edits, then we can use the update one here. Okay. And we can also use find to find everything. Okay. So find one, because in this case, the post should be one. It should not. Actually, it can be many posts of the same name, but for this scenario, we'll just assume it's only one name. Okay. Just for uh, illustration purposes. So we go to the, sorry, title, and we want to check this title that is passed by the user. So post.title. Okay, we want to check that. Then we have a callback function in this method. And the callback function has error and it has found list. So it will return to us uh, it will return to us this list back to us. The this one. Uh, the posts one. Okay, it will just return it back to us. So it will check if the list exists, then in that case I will return it back to you. And when it is found then we want to push to it. And if it is not found, then I want to uh, ignore it or uh, or not push anything to it. Okay, so in that case, I don't want to do anything to it. So the first thing, as a good practice, we'll check if there is no error, then check if there is no list, then create it. Okay, then we are going to create it. So I'm just going to create a constant and I'm going to call it uh, post return, referring to the data that is returned from the user. And it is going to be of type a new, and let's see. To, let's see what name we have chosen here. Let me go here. We have called it. Let me delete this. We don't need it anymore. Uh, let me close this. I have called it post, of course. Okay. So new post, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass to it the title. So title is going to be what the user has given us. Post title. Okay, and the second thing I'm going to pass is the post. So post would be post dot uh, post or content. It's called content in the code. And after that is done, then I'm going to save whatever we have created. Post returned dot save to the collection, and then I'm going to redirect the user to the home page. Else, 
if the user is trying to create a post that already exists, I'll not allow him to do that. Okay, I'll not save it. It will not be saved. It's just a one post. We have a, we have a dictatorship here. Then else, it's going to just re redirect the user to the home page. Okay, so this is basically what's going to happen if we do a submission now. Okay, so let's see it in action. So if I say test, I'll just copy some lorem ipsum. Lorem, lorem, ah, why it doesn't auto-complete? I think it's only in HTML, it completes. Lorem, yeah. So let me just take it and paste it. And if I publish it, of course, we're going to run into errors. And what it is saying is that Yeah, so, and the reason why we got this error is because we have res that redirect here and then here and then here. So we cannot do that. So we cannot uh, redirect one time and then a second time. So we just need to remove the second one. So let's actually do that again and go to compose and to test, lorem epsom, publish. So now if you go to our MongoDB, we can say db.post.find and it will t show us the title and the post that we uh, have now and it automatically creates an ID. So now it is connected to a database and it posts everything we post is posted to the database. So just for testing purposes, let's compose another one. Let's see if it will be posted. If we make a test and the same, it's it's allowed it in this case. Uh, so the, the title, it's allowed it, but if it is uh, uh, here, we did a check. If the list is not found, then just redirect to the main page, okay? However, what is happening here is that when we go to the get, it's actually just rendering the starting content, which we uh, have here and the post of posts which we have here and which we actually have pushed so I just I'll just stop it okay so if I save it I don't want to push I don't want to display anything from that nothing is displayed here it means we are not displaying everything correctly okay so we need to get that from the database actually so if we go to the main page we want to render okay we want to render the home home here okay and then send stuff to it so home is actually the AGS let's just think of it as HTML with JavaScript embedded with it so it needs starting content, which would be home. Okay, let's keep it like that. We don't want to change anything. But it also, it takes posts, okay? And posts, in this case, we want to take it from the database. We want it to find everything, and we want to send it here. So how do we send that in the app.js? We actually can do, what, do it using the find function that we uh, found earlier. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut this render method. Okay, I'll just cut it. And we're going to start from scratch here, OK? So actually, let me copy, keep it here and comment it out, just for reference. Okay, so the next thing is, after we commented this out, is we want to start from scratch. So we want to do this, uh, like we want to render the posts from the database. And if you see here, we did, did uh, the previous way, we used to pass the starting content, and we used to pass posts as a whole, OK? So in this case, we have written in the home page uh, for each. And it will take whatever we pass to it, and it will it can actually look at the title and the content. But we're going to need to change that, unless actually we just change this here to content, which will just make things easier. So we don't need to change a lot of code in this case. But in that case, I need to delete uh, the database as a whole. So the, the, the post dot uh, sorry drop post just deleted. Okay. So uh, in that case, uh, what I want to do is I'm going to render the posts that we create. Right now we don't have anything. Okay, shouldn't work. Uh, there's nothing here. So the way we do uh, the get method is I'm going to find in the post, if we find anything, post.find using the model, if we, the criteria that we have is we want to get everything actually, okay? We want to get everything. And this function takes the, the condition or the filter and takes a callback function. And the callback function has an error and it has also a found items. Sorry, found items, it's not, whatever. This one is not, a, like just, I'm just following a convention. Okay, it doesn't have to be written in that way. It's just. We have to know that uh, you specify the variable name as, as you like. Okay. And when we do that, okay, we want to check. Does uh, or did is there an error? Error in this case. There's no error. Then I will pass on the found items. So I'm going to render. I'm going to unenable this. I'm going to render the home page. And I'm going to pass to it the starting content to be the home starting content this one and the posts to be the found items okay so let me save that let me actually create compose something test lower epsom and publish it and it's going to give us an error of course and if we go to home uh, dot home dot ags it's going to tell us that 
there is an error it cannot find content so let's see what we did wrong so in this case uh -huh, this is the issue so when we say post returned we say new post but here we did not change this to content so it's not it doesn't know us what we're doing so let's drop it again and let's recreate compose another one test and then let me just publish it so it is not published it is published in this case done so if i click on read more it doesn't work this is going to be our next step but before we do that there is just one thing that i want to uh do before uh, anything is this redirect I want to, to be extra sure. The save function actually takes a callback function and it returns an error. So this is just to be error proof. If there is an error, okay, when we have done the post, if there is no error, just return us to the uh, main page. Okay. Uh, so the next thing we want to do is we want to render the correct uh, blog post based on the post ID. So when we click on this one, we want to go, uh, we want to, go to, to, the, to the post ID. Okay, so we, we just uh, go to, to basically this title. So in that case, we need to actually find find the post that we are clicking. So we need to understand the HTML in this case. So if we go, actually, sorry, the post page in this case. So if we go to the post page, it just takes title and content. And then uh, this is what we are rendering when we are saying, get this post name, okay? We are going to the post and we are just passing the uh, post title and the post content, okay? So in this case, what ha we have to do is we actually also have to change everything here as we did, did earlier. And when we go to that path, which if we go to home, okay, and if we go to, it's going to take the title. When we click on this, we can see down, it's going to slash test. So it specifies it here. So if, we, if you look down, it's going to say slash posts slash test. Okay. So when that happens, what we want to do is we need to do changes here in order for this ahref to func function correctly when we click on read more. So we actually can do it with uh, this one here with post name, but we actually want to make it more complex. As we said, we want to do it with post ID. Okay. Okay. So in this case, we get what we get here. Okay. Uh, using the body parser, and then we use the low dash library to make it lowercase, just to keep things simple. Uh, so after we do that, we are gonna need to change this. Okay, because we do not need a for each function anymore. We'll actually use use uh, mongoose to find what we want. Okay, which already has a built-in for each function. Okay, so, but we just need to understand the logic. So it just goes to posts, and once it finds uh, for each, once it finds the post, uh, the element it gets the element of the post in posts, and then we store the title and store title, and then we check if the title is equal to whatever the user has posted. Then we're gonna render this. Okay, but we don't need to do all of that with Mongoose. So we're gonna gonna copy this code right here, and keep it here, and comment it, and we'll see how we can make it differently with Mongoose. With Mongoose. Okay. So let me actually delete this. So let me see where we are. So it's still here. So let me delete the for each. Okay. So we want to find the post by ID. So if we go to the app.js, uh, we actually can, uh, we'll do the post ID. So uh, in this case, when the user wants to get a post, then we'll just pass uh, the post ID dynamically in this case. So uh, the way we do it, uh, of course, is we have to look through the database for an ID. And we can actually go to post dot find by id and the way we if we look at the arguments of this function it actually takes an id okay and uh, so this will just find a single document and documents in this case uh, means like a, a single field so we can call one of the items here a document so if we specify a title and a post then this whole thing will actually be a document okay this whole thing will actually be we can call it a document so this is what it's referred to here. So if we go to the documentation, it says find it by an ID, and we just pass the underscore ID ID, and then we'll find it. So as as we said in the doc documentation, underscore ID will be uh, the requested. So let me just change this to ID requested ID that we got from this post ID, and we lower cased it cased it. So once we find it, then if we go to the find by ID function, it has projection, uh, and the projection in this case basically is a callback function. Okay. So it's a callback function, we say function, and it has error and also found, I found item or list, whatever, found items. So once we have found it, we want, if we check here, we want to render the page post. Do we want to render post? Yes, we want to render the page post. Okay, and we want to pass it with the title and the content. 
So found items in this case, the case it will return it, return the title and the content. Okay. So we say res dot render. Let's actually check if there is an error. If there is no error, so just for practice, if found items dot length is equal equal to zero, then I'll just uh, res dot render. Sorry, res dot redirect to the home page. Else, res dot render. And we're going to render the post page, and we're going to pass to it. It needs title and content. Okay. So I'll just open that, and we have title, and the title will be part of the found items. In this case, found items dot title. As we have seen, we actually have title, and now it should be content actually. So if we db dot posts dot find, we should have content. Okay. So content is there now. So we say content is found items dot content. In this case, see, do we have any errors? We don't have any errors. That's okay. That's good. So let me actually refresh. We are seeing this, but if we click on it, it is still not working. Uh, so yeah, uh, actually what the issue was is, as we can see here, when I try to print it out, it's pasting it, or it's it's when we click on it, it's all in low, lowercase. So we don't need to make it lowercase. We need to remove the lowercase. It should be, because the object ID is at lowercase. So if I save that, click on it, it works. So now it's perfect. Okay, so this is basically the completed one. So we can just now compose and it will have a unique ID. Everything is good to go and everything is on the database. I am stored on the database and let me do, do a proper lorem ipsum. Lorem. So if I paste it, it is all good. I'm stored on the database. If I try to stop the server, so to stop now, it's not working. I don't know if the data is there. So the site cannot be reached. So if I run it again, I have .js. I refresh this, the data is persist persistent. So it can go, I can go, go to this and read it. And that's it for this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching.